Hi everyone, you know there's nothing like experiencing the thrills and fun of an amusement park, and that sentiment doesn't wane as you get older either, it only grows stronger. Amusement parks and theme parks are one of the last places where you can really let loose and embrace your inner child. But sadly, not all these parks make it, and many of them have closed their doors forever. Their rides will never be ridden again, which is sad, they're left to rust and decay. So join me for today's video as we're going to take a look at the top 15 largest abandoned amusement parks in the world. Number 15. Dadi Park Alright, kicking off the list of abandoned amusement parks is Belgium's Dadi Park, which was a haven of fun for children until tragedy struck. Coming into its own originally as a church playground for children of a basilica, Dadi Park would become Belgium's first private amusement park. It was completed in 1950 as a playground for the children of religious travelers visiting the nearby church, but by 1980 all the boring schoolyard equipment had been replaced with awesome amusement rides before opening to the general public. For a time, the park enjoyed great success, seeing a million visitors during its peak year who enjoyed the 2,600-foot-long Monkey Bridge, the longest in Europe at the time. However, things took a turn for the worse as maintenance on the rides began to wane, making them progressively hazardous to the riders. But things really hit the fan in 2000 when a boy lost his arm on the Nautic Jet Ride, and by 2002 the Dottie Park staff said they were closing down the park for renovations. However, it seems that was just a front, because those renovations never happened, and the closed park fell into the state of ruin that we see today. Number 14. Consono until 1962, Consono was a small medieval town in northern Italy with a population of about 300, and despite being just an hour's drive from Milan, its location in the hills of Brianza made it a remote, quiet, and peaceful place. Residents had thrived here by growing and harvesting crops like leeks, celery, and especially chestnuts from the bountiful trees which grew on the mountain slope. Things were good, but everything changed when a Count Mario Banno, a local businessman, began building new infrastructure in the country during the economic boom. He saw Consano as an untapped opportunity, and it was here he would build his City of Toys, hoping to bring in tourism and cash from Milan. But in order to make his dream a reality, he would have to demolish all the buildings of the ancient village, and a nearby hill was leveled with explosives to provide a better view of the Alps. The only buildings that remained were the 13th century church, rectory, and cemetery. While the city of toys would be compared to Las Vegas, the Count wanted to continue to build attractions like a soccer field, a basketball court, a tennis court, a golf course, a skating rink, an amusement park, and a zoo. Well, too bad though, the main road to Consono was washed away after a few years of construction, eliminating the site's main flow of customers and effectively killing the project. Now the odd, half-completed village of kitschy buildings is abandoned and crumbling under decades of neglect and graffiti, and it's now just full of rides that will never be. Number 13. Fantasy World Sitting on the very top of a hill in the Philippines is a Disney-esque castle, but this massive and vibrant structure, which looks great, also seems a little out of place, and that's because it is. There were grand plans for the castle and its surrounding theme park to become the Disneyland of the Philippines, Fantasy World, and rival the international Disney theme parks. But seeing as how Fantasy World made it to this list, things didn't pan out so well. And while they clearly went ahead with construction, the dream of opening the park never came to be when the businessmen behind the project ran into some serious financial issues before construction was complete, forcing them to abandon this plan. The once vibrant colors of the castle are now quickly fading, and chipping away paint peels from the walls of the unfinished rooms too. The rides lay rusted and dormant and now stand as a reminder of what could have been. Though the park didn't open as planned, folks can still enter and explore this nightmarish Disneyland and take photos. You can walk along the rope bridge that leads to the park's treehouse, which offers beautiful views of the local scenery. You can even climb the castle's towers and feel like a real-life Rapunzel surveying the empty kingdom. Number 12. Ho Tu Tien Costing around $3 million to build, the Ho Tu Tien water park opened its doors in 2004. However, it was only partially completed in the hopes to make some money back as quickly as humanly possible. Funded by company Hue Tourism, they would quickly learn that debuting a half-finished park turned out to be a bad business move and closed its doors not long after. But in an odd turn of events, ever since its closure, the park has provided Hue's tourism industry with an off-the-books boon they never could have seen coming. In the heyday of Ho Tui Tien, the adults and children alike were magnetically attracted to the park's signature giant three-story tall dragon aquarium. 
Rearing its head from the lake at the park center, manta rays and sharks line the walls of the interior staircase, built to resemble a dragon's rib cage. On all sides of the dragon's bowels were aquarium tanks full of live fish and crocodiles. The place was actually pretty spectacular, and although the park is closed now, plenty of tourists come there to take photos and say they came to Ho Toi Tien. Other than strange vibes, the once great park doesn't offer much else these days. Number 11. Disney's River Country Built in 1976, Disney's River Country was the first water park at Disney World. River Country was located along the shores of Bay Lake. This new water park took on a more rustic theme until it closed indefinitely on November 2, 2001. But by 2005, Disney said the park would never open again and to this day remains an old, rusted, tetanus-filled arena. So what exactly happened here? Well, under the Disney brand, shouldn't something like River Country become a mainstay? Well, Disney set the park up for failure in 1989 when it opened a second water park, Typhoon Lagoon. It had a lot more parking, more slides, newer amenities, and was much, much larger. And then just six years later in 1995, Disney opened a third water park, Blizzard Beach, which was also much bigger than River Country. Demand fell dramatically, so they simply closed the doors and left it there to rot and be reclaimed by nature after draining the epic 330,000-gallon pool. While Disney has claimed that the defunct water park would be torn down and replaced by a new hotel resort, plans for the future project have yet to be set in motion. Number 10. Nara Dreamland Nara Dreamland in Nara, Japan was built in 1961, and it was based on the original Disneyland in Anaheim, California. It features its own version of Main Street USA, Sleeping Beauty's Castle, Autopia, Matterhorn, and Jungle Cruise. However, nothing can truly ever compete with the likes of the real Disneyland, so it would eventually close permanently in 2006 and be left forever abandoned. It's begun to fall into a state of disrepair, but has become a favorite destination for many urban explorers looking to snap a photo and see the once fun and vibrant dreamland. But this story is an interesting one. The original Disneyland opened in Anaheim, California in 1955, and Nara Dreamland opened just six years later. The park was almost a carbon copy of Disneyland, which certainly helped with its demise. As construction progressed, the man behind the project took issue with the license fee being sought by Disney for use of its famous characters and landmarks. But rather than abandon the project, they simply looked to rebrand, naming their mascots Ran-Chan and Dori-Chan. But if you've ever been to Japan, you'll know that today there's a Tokyo Disney. Disneyland came to the country in 1985, and the locals preferred the real deal over the knockoff version. And the rest, as they say, is history. Number 9. Okpo Land There was a brief moment in time when South Korea's Okpo Land was one of the most famous amusement parks in all of Asia. Because of its proximity to the Daewoo Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering Shipyard, Okpo Land attracted a more affluent crowd. It was hugely popular among the local population when it opened, and the ideal entertainment for those with the cash to spend. Things were good, but things went south quickly when the duck-themed ride, which was one of the main attractions in the park, caused at least one fatality in the early 1990s. And if that wasn't enough, a train derailed and fell to the ground, killing one and injuring several others. The ride would continue to operate, and no compensation or apology was ever received, giving rise to rumors about the owner paying off local officials, which would obviously leave a sour taste in the mouths of patrons. In 1999, someone would die on that ride again when one of the trains derailed and capsized, killing a young girl. Following that accident, the park's owner vanished overnight, and Okpo Land was closed immediately and indefinitely. It remains abandoned with the rides left in place, and the capsized duck train from which the child fell all those years ago remained hanging over the edge as it had done on that tragic day until the park was demolished in 2011. Number 8. Gulliver's Kingdom Gulliver's Travels may be a classic book, but adapting that old tale into a theme park proved to be a pretty rough idea. Gulliver's Kingdom Theme Park was built near Japan's Mount Fuji using some newfound government stimulus money. This massive white elephant existed for only 10 years, and today there's little, if any, trace of the abandoned theme park. All that's left are the ruins of the giant Gulliver himself. The park opened to the public in 1997 and was created with the hope of bringing the economy out of the post-economic bubble downturn. But this park was doomed from the get-go. It was backed financially by the Nagata Chuo Bank, which later collapsed after some very, very bad loans before becoming what's known as a zombie bank. 
The Nagata Chuo Bank was forced to clear the books of all unprofitable assets, one of which was Gulliver's Kingdom, which ran them about 350 million bucks. In October of 2001, the unpopular theme park shut its doors for the last time. But on top of the bad bank loans, Gulliver's Kingdom had some pretty morbid neighbors. Aoki Gahara, more commonly and sadly known as the Suicide Forest, and the Kamikawishiki Village, which was home to a notorious doomsday cult. So even if the park did survive those loans, it likely would have not seen much traffic, seeing as how those two surrounding areas are not something locals like to be reminded of. Number 7. Pripyat Amusement Park When it comes to describing Pripyat Amusement Park, there's really only one word that can describe it. Chernobyl. Pripyat Amusement Park lies to this day in Ukraine and was supposed to open on the 1st of May 1986. However, things changed when the Chernobyl disaster occurred just five days before. The park was complete with bumper cars, a carnival-style shooting game, swing boats, a paratrooper ride, and the now iconic 85-foot Ferris wheel, all of which are still there under a thick layer of dust and rust. Depending on where you go, the park has various levels of radiation, with the Ferris wheel said to have some of the highest. It's not the type of place you really ever want to visit, but the Pripyat Amusement Park has become incredibly famous in pop culture, having been referenced and recreated for numerous video games, movies, and television shows, despite having never quite officially opened to the public. Number 6. Encore Garden When it was first built, Encore Garden in the Taichung region of Taiwan was the place to be. The family-friendly amusement park really had it all, from amusement rides to the playground to the epic water curtain and dancing fountains. It was a great place for a great time. But in 1999, the Encore Garden fell victim to Mother Nature when she was rocked by an earthquake. With most of the rides and facilities left in shambles, the park quickly folded, and so much money was lost that they would never be able to recover. The land and its facilities, however, have not been sold, reused, or recovered since. Weeds grow taller than humans, vines climb and intertwine over and through the buildings, and dead leaves that will never be swept cover everything. Everything down to the token booths are still there as if the garden staff just got up and left in a hurry. But despite the lack of life, people still come here for a different type of thrill. Encore Garden is a popular spot for urban explorers and folks who appreciate the creep factor. But since the park is still under private ownership, entry without authorization is strictly prohibited but don't expect to find any security guards there trying to stop you if you do. Number 5. Spree Park Southeastern Berlin's Spree Park has been abandoned for two decades now, and it certainly shows. Leaving behind remnants dating back to 1969, Spree Park was originally built by the East German government and would see nearly 2 million visitors a year. So what happened here? Well, in 1991, a man by the name of Norbert Witte bought the park and replaced the hard asphalt with softer features like a grass and water landscape and installed plenty of rides, many of which he bought from a defunct amusement park in Paris. All of this sounded nice on paper, but unbeknownst to police and Berliners, Witte was very much involved in the smuggling of cocaine, which he would package and stash away in the park's equipment. Over the years, Spree Park saw less and less visitors, especially once people had heard the rumors of the nefarious owner, who was eventually brought in on smuggling charges in 2004. The park remained, albeit closed down forever, and was quickly reclaimed by nature. But in 2014, an arsonist would destroy many of Spree Park's once-beloved features. In 2016, the Grün Berlin Company bought the park in the hopes of breathing new life into it, but those plans have come to an absolute standstill. Number 4. Wonderland Eurasia Once it was touted as the biggest theme park in Europe, Wonderland Eurasia opened in Ankara, Turkey in March of 2019 to much fanfare. The 320-acre theme park featured 17 roller coasters and dozens of other attractions, so it's safe to say that this place was going to be pretty epic, even if it cost the Ankara Metropolitan Municipality hundreds of millions of dollars to build. But despite all that fanfare, it closed its doors permanently in 2020, not even making it to its one-year anniversary. So what happened to Wonderland Eurasia? Well, the place was set up to fail, because just 48 hours after opening, one of the rides suffered a malfunction forcing people to evacuate. And further political turmoil, subpar ride quality, and the lack of attendance all contributed to the park's downfall. The operator struggled to pay both the staff and the utility bills, and so it closed before they could even finish building some of the attractions. Today, the site looks more like a dump than it does an actual amusement park, as decaying dinosaurs, broken-down models, and headless robotic features dominate the landscape, 
creating a particularly eerie scene just outside of the capital city. Number 3. Geauga Lake Geauga Lake was an amusement park in Bainbridge Township and Aurora, Ohio, opened way back in 1887 in what had been a local recreational area. The first amusement ride was added in 1889, and the park's first roller coaster, the Big Dipper, was built in 1925. The park had changed hands over the years, being bought by company after company before finally closing in 2007. After 120 years, what happened? What went wrong? Well, in 2000, Geauga Lake was under the ownership of Premier Parks, which owned Six Flags, and they would rebrand the park as Six Flags Ohio and added four new roller coasters. The next year, Premier Parks would buy the adjacent SeaWorld Ohio and combine the two parks under the name Six Flags World of Adventure. But in 2004, Cedar Fair paid Premier a whopping $145 million for the park and removed all Six Flags theming, including the DC Comics and Looney Tunes characters and areas, as well as reverted the name of the park back to the original Geauga Lake. But those were some pretty big draws that they got rid of. The ride names also had to be changed due to copyright issues, including Batman, Night Flight changing to Dominator, and Mind Eraser changed to Headspin, Serial Thriller changed to Thunderhawk, and Superman Ultimate Escape was renamed Steel Venom, as well as Roadrunner Express changed to Beaverland Mine Ride. People liked name recognition and appreciated Six Flags' brand reliability, but now that was gone from Geauga Lake, so people stopped coming, which left Cedar Fair in a tough financial spot, which would cause them to close down the park for the season, only for it to never reopen. Number 2. Trinity Loop Before it became an amusement park, the train loop near Trinity Trinity Loop was part of the Newfoundland Railway. Trinity is surrounded by steep hills, and the railway looped around a pond to gain elevation to reach the town. But when the highways and airports started moving in, offering faster methods of travel, the newfound railway was forced to shut down in 1988. So what to do with the line? Well, after some fighting over ownership of the land, the site was converted into an amusement park. For many years, its miniature train was the only locomotive still operating on the island, and they eventually added boats and ponies, dine in a rail car restaurant, or see the entire pond from the top of the Ferris wheel. The park even featured live entertainment, miniature golf, a museum, and a petting zoo. There was a lot going on, and a lot of fun to be had at Trinity Loop. But all good things must come to an end, and they ceased operations and closed their doors in 2004. And while all the visitors are gone, all of the relics of Trinity Loop remain. Today, Trinity Loop is filled with graffiti and murals to complement the nature that is slowly reclaiming the area, and much of the tracks have been washed away due to hurricanes. But people still come here, surprisingly, to swim and fish in the waters nearby. Number 1. Six Flags New Orleans It's tough to believe that even one Six Flags has made it onto a list of abandoned amusement parks, but there's an even bigger one than what we've already seen sitting in New Orleans. Originally opening under the name Jazzland, Six Flags New Orleans opened in 2000 and became a Six Flags in 2003 after a $20 million deal. And the park has done incredibly well since then, but if you know a thing or two about recent history, New Orleans was hit by the devastating Hurricane Katrina in 2005, and parts of the city have still yet to recover all these years later, even the Six Flags. With the looming threat of Katrina, the former Jazzland closed just eight days before the storm landed, never to reopen again. Most of the rides and vendor stalls were either completely destroyed or damaged beyond repair, but the entire park was flooded beyond belief, with water levels reaching six feet. In the aftermath, Six Flags salvaged what little they could, and while the city looked into demolishing the park and clearing the land, local residents spoke out against the $1.3 million endeavor. Today, Six Flags New Orleans remains completely abandoned, but still drawing in urban explorers and vloggers looking to get whatever thrills the park can offer in its current state. But the city was able to breathe just a wisp of new life into the old jazz land, leasing out the park to production companies looking to film there. I'll see you next time. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.